Okay, New Blood, we have a lot to do today, so let's get busy. The first thing you're gonna need is a repair pack. I've waypointed one for you, so go ahead and get it. I want you to ski to the small bunker I've waypointed for you. To ski, head down the hill and hold the jump button, which is L1. You will notice that you pick up speed as you travel. Skiing can be used in conjunction with the jetpack to travel more efficiently. you'll see an inventory station. This station is damaged and non-functional. You're gonna change that. Activate your repair pack by pressing the circle button. This will cause your current weapon to be replaced by the repair tool from your pack. Now get close to the station and place your targeting crosshairs on it. Press and hold the fire button, which is L2, to begin the repair process. Okay, now go into your inventory setup and select the shield pack. Once you've done that, go and get one from the inventory station. The shield pack provides extra protection against enemy fire at the expense of your suit's energy reserve. When the shield is active, the shield pack icon will flash and you'll hear an audible cue. Remember, if your energy runs out, the shield will deactivate. Use it by pressing the circle button. Good. Now, enter your inventory menu and set your loadout to medium armor with a remote station as your pack. All remote inventory stations are deployed with a beacon. This beacon will transmit a signal to you and your allies, pinpointing the location of the station on your HUD. Your weapon systems will be disabled for the purposes of this exercise, so your weapon choice doesn't matter. Once you have set your loadout, step onto the inventory station platform. Now you're going to deploy the remote station. Head on over to the new waypoint in your HUD. Look directly at the point where you want to attempt to deploy the remote station, then press the circle button. Note that the station will not deploy if the location at which you are aiming is too close or too far. Your suit's onboard systems will keep you informed of other restrictions when attempting remote deployment. Good. Remote inventory stations have everything the base stations have with two key exceptions. First, you cannot acquire an additional remote station, and second, you cannot change your armor type. Used properly, remote stations can be valuable field assets for you and your teammates. Deploying that station left you without a pack, so let's get a new one. This time, I want you to select a missile barrel pack. These can be used to change out barrel types on base turrets. Go ahead and get one now. Okay, now I want you to go to the turret I've waypointed. Approach it, target it, and press the circle button to swap barrels. Good job. Now, while we're on the subject of turrets, go into your inventory screen and select a remote turret as your pack. Once you've done that, get one from the remote station. Remote turrets can be deployed on almost any surface you can reach. Each team has a limited number of these, and they cannot be placed within close proximity of each other. 
When you got one, go ahead and deploy it by pressing the circle button. Listen up. Now it's time to learn about remote sensors. Sensors extend the firing range for all types of turrets. Remote sensors can be placed in the field to strengthen turret defenses in selected areas. Two sensor units come in a pack. Using the circle button will deploy one. Do this now. Now for some serious ordnance. A satchel charge pack is a remotely detonated high explosive munition. Get one from the remote station, then press the circle button to deploy it. Remember, just press the circle button one time to deploy. Got it? Once a satchel charge is deployed, it takes a moment to arm itself. Now even in heavy armor, you do not want to experience a satchel detonation at close range. I suggest you move off a safe distance. When ready, press the circle button to trigger the charge. That's it for advanced equipment training. Get some rest. We'll be working with vehicles next.